1965, New Orleans native and single mom to two boys, Ruth Fertel mortgaged her home to purchase the then popular steakhouse, Chris Steakhouse. Soon after, she added her name to the original and it became Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, the largest upscale steakhouse chain in the world with over 170 locations worldwide. Welcome to Restaurant Recipe Recreations, everybody, a channel dedicated to teaching you how to create your favorite signature recipes from the most popular restaurants. And of course, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to recreate the famous barbecue shrimp from Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. What the barbecue butter appetizer from Ruth's Chris is, are large shrimp that are first sauteed in a white wine and then finished in a compound butter of garlic and barbecued spices. It's served with a crusty bread so that after you've enjoyed your shrimp, you've got something to mop up that delicious barbecue butter with. All right, let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, I would like to ask that if I'm bringing you value by teaching you how to recreate your favorite signature recipes from the most popular restaurants, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. And if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. So to begin, I'm going to start by making the compound butter just so we can get it in the refrigerator and it gives it like a little chance to harden up before we toss it in the shrimp. So in a small mixing bowl, start with one eight ounce stick of room temperature butter. You don't want the butter to be melted, but you want it to be room temperature, as soft as possible. Next, add two teaspoons of fresh garlic chopped very finely. Four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I can't stand saying that word. I always feel like I'm mispronouncing it. Worcestershire sauce. It's even worse for me to spell it. One teaspoon of Tabasco hot sauce, which is also from Louisiana, like Ruth Fertel. If you like a little extra spice, feel free to kick it up a notch. A half of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. A half of a teaspoon of ground rosemary. And a half of a teaspoon of paprika. Not the smoked kind, just regular paprika. And then just mix the compound butter until all of the ingredients are thoroughly mixed. That's why it's so important to start with a room temperature butter so that it's easier for mixing. I mentioned that this shrimp was served with some crusty bread. So before I put my compound butter in the refrigerator while the butter is still soft, I'm going to brush some of that butter onto this crusty bread so that when I put it in the oven, it's got that nice butter on it. And then just place this on a parchment lined cookie sheet so that we can crisp this up in the oven when our shrimp is finished. Some of you may or may not know that I had a very long career at Roos Chris Steakhouse as one of their sales and marketing directors. And as sales and marketing director at Roos Chris, we used to do a lot of off-premise events for charity and food and wine fests and things like that. And we would feature some of our signature items from the menu. But one of the dishes that we always did without fail was the barbecued shrimp appetizer. So I've probably made this appetizer about 50 times. I mean, literally. <laughs> well, now it's 51. <laughs> now that we've brushed all of our crusty bread with the butter, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator just so it gives a chance to kind of harden up a little bit while we saute the shrimp. So I have here one pound of 1620 shrimp. And what 1620 shrimp means is that there are between 16 and 20 shrimp per pound of shrimp. And that gives you an idea, obviously, of what the size of each one of the shrimp are. So a 1620 shrimp is like a medium to large shrimp. It's not a jumbo shrimp. Those are considered to be U10s, meaning there's under 10 shrimp per pound. So 16 to 20 shrimp is about this size here. So I've got a full pound. I've got about 16 to 20 shrimp in here. Actually, I think I counted them out. It's about 20 shrimp. So my shrimp have already been deveined, but they do need to be peeled. And again, I'm leaving the tail on. Now, if your shrimp needs to be deveined, if you don't know how to do that, you're going to take a sharp paring knife and make a very, very small incision down the back of the shrimp where you see that black line. And then you pull out that black vein, so to speak. It is called a vein, although it's not truly a vein. It's the intestinal tract of a shrimp. So you really do wanna make sure that you get rid of that because we all know what goes into an intestinal tract, right? I think I read somewhere in Garden and Gun that there was an argument for keeping the vein in a shrimp. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there is, there's no such argument. <laughs> the vein is always gonna come out of the shrimp that I eat anyways. Now that your shrimp has been peeled into vein, just set it in a bowl, set it off to the side, and you wanna chop two tablespoons of green onion, green part only. Make sure to chop your green onion finely. In a large saute pan on a high heat, add two tablespoons of canola oil. Move the oil around to coat the bottom of the pan and add your one pound of shrimp. So 
saute the shrimp for about two to three minutes until they are just done and become a nice bright pink color. Now to the shrimp, add about two tablespoons of a dry white wine to deglaze the pan. And then toss the shrimp around in the white wine. Once the shrimp have sauteed for about two minutes, transfer them back into the bowl. Using the same saute pan, add one half of a cup of the same dry white wine that you used to deglaze the pan. Now scrape the pan so that you get all of the fond from the bottom of the pan to add to the flavor of the sauce. Allow the white wine to simmer and reduce by half. Once the white wine has reduced by half, add in your green onion and allow the green onion to cook slightly. And one tablespoon at a time, whisk in your compound butter. Now whisk in three tablespoons of heavy cream. Now add two pinches of salt. Add back in your shrimp and toss to coat. Don't forget to put your buttered garlic bread in the oven for about three or four minutes at 350, so that's ready to go. When your shrimp is done, all you need to do then to serve it is just plate up or platter up your shrimp and make sure that you coat all of the shrimp with all of the extra barbecue butter. And then just sprinkle some slivered green onions over the top and it's ready to enjoy. So for my moment of truth, I'm not even gonna bother with a fork and a knife, I'm just going in with my hands. Mm. And the best part about the bread is that none of this barbecue butter goes to waste. You just dip the bread in the butter and it's like two appetizers in one. That's it. I should know, I've made it 51 times, right? <laughs> I'm gonna do one more. It's been a minute since I've had these and they're delicious. And if you have a restaurant or recipe that you would like me to feature in an upcoming video, go ahead and drop it in the comments section below. I promise I'll take a look at it. I actually do a lot of request videos, but make sure that you hit the notification bell so that when your episode comes up, you'll be notified. And until I see you again, everybody, make it an awesome, awesome day. Cheers, I love y'all. And for more great recipes from Bruce Chris Steakhouse, check out right here.